Hi, welcome back guys. It is drizzling right now, but I've promised to get a video out every Sunday. So this episode is going to be focusing on the thought process and my approach to building this boat. I haven't made a whole lot of progress since last week in real life, but what I have done is I have read a ton about composites and I'm just absorbing this stuff like a sponge. So I want to go over the types of fiberglass first. They're not all the same. So we're going to start with this one. This is just chopped strand mat. It's random pieces of fiberglass uh, thrown together in no particular orientation. They're not linked at all. They're just smashed together. Now mat is not very strong, but it does really conform well to compound curves and complex surfaces. So this is generally used in between layers of woven roving, which I'll get to in a second. So after this stuff, which is not very strong, you have just typical fiberglass cloth. This is just like woven cloth, like you'd see in a t-shirt if you looked at it closely. And you can get this in a bunch of different weights. This is what most people think of when they think of fiberglass. And this stuff's okay, it's pretty general purpose. This is a good middle ground for fiberglass. There's another version of this called woven roving, which is really chunky. I'll try to get some footage of it uh, right here. That stuff is really strong, but it does not conform to compound surfaces very well. Lastly, there's this type of fiberglass called biaxial mat. I'll put a picture of it here. What's interesting about biaxial is that it's not woven together. And what I have learned is that fiberglass strength is actually due to the tensile strength, like if you pull on it. And what happens with this woven stuff, if you were to zoom in on it all the way, all these little strands of fiberglass are making a little zigzag. So under compressive or kind of tensile loads, it can straighten out that little squiggle. But if you use biaxial cloth, it's completely straight. So basically, if you take a core material, whether it be plywood or a honeycomb synthetic panel, and you put biaxial cloth on both sides of it, and then do another panel and just use regular fiberglass cloth, the biaxial cloth uh, panel is going to outperform the regular one by a pretty substantial margin. What that means is it'll be stiffer and you can use less layers, which less weight, you know, good, more performance. The other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, my plans for materials in this boat. Now, you guys saw all the wood that I tore out of it. I'm not looking to do that again, so I'm not gonna keep it outside. That's the biggest way to uh, keep a boat nice. Don't let moisture get on the inside of it. But with lumber prices being so freaking crazy right now, it actually, is not that big of a jump to hop up to some of these composites. So because I really like learning and trying new things and playing with new materials, I'm going to be doing full composite build on this thing. There's going to be pretty much no wood left in this boat. So the materials I'm going to be using for the transom and the stringer is called Kusa board. Kusa is a closed cell polyurethane foam. And what that means is that all the little bubbles of foam are completely sealed off from each other so it's not gonna absorb water like a sponge. If water does get through the exterior fiberglass layer, it, it's not gonna gain any water weight. It's, it's gonna stay rigid forever. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool about Kusa is it's actually mixed together with fiberglass strand before it's cured, and there are layers of fiberglass in it. So you can get Kusa in a bunch of different thicknesses. The factory stringer on my boat was an inch and a half thick. It was a two by six, and the transom I believe was an inch and a half thick as well. Now I could get Kusa an inch and a half thick, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try to get Kusa in three quarter inch thick, two sheets of it. What that's going to allow me to do is build up my transom in layers with fiberglass and resin in between it. I'm going to be able to build my stringer out of Kusa as well. So those two main structural components of the hull are going to be this this Kusa board. It's about 30 to 40 percent lighter than plywood and should never rot out so pretty excited about that. The other thing that I thought a lot about was the floor. Now I've had a bunch of people say you don't really need to run a floor because this boat has these tunnels in it and those tunnels act as like torsional rigidity and that's true but given that Mod VP racing is no longer uh, a thing. This isn't actually going to be a competitive like race boat race boat. It's going to be a pleasure boat that is based on a race boat hull, just like it was from the factory. So I want to run a full floor. Reason being is if you don't run a full floor, I'm going to have the floor of the boat have tunnels dip, dip down, then have a stringer, and it just seems like a good way for someone to 
twist their ankle or I, I don't want anyone to get hurt. It's, it's not really worth it. Originally, I was going to be running three quarter inch plywood with a layer of fiberglass on both sides. Um, but again, due to the lumber prices, I've actually found this stuff called uh, Carbon Core or Nida Core. There's a bunch of different names for it. It's a honeycomb composite panel and the interior of the panel is a honeycomb structure made out of polyethylene or like milk jugs. Um, on both sides of this milk jug honeycomb is a non-woven synthetic fabric, a lot like you'd see in a, a face mask since everyone has those now. So what that's going to do is it allows you to get the fiberglass resin and impregnate that whole non-woven synthetic layer and then put glass on top of it so the whole surface bonds really, really well. What this means is that basically you can get structural panels for floors that are just incredibly light compared to plywood. I, I think, I don't know how much my three quarter inch plywood sheets weigh, but if you try to pick one up, it's, it's quite heavy. With the weight savings of going to Kusa board and doing a honeycomb composite, this should be substantially lighter than stock, substantially stiffer than stock, and probably uh, go quite a bit faster since there will be less haul in the water, which is sweet. So uh, because it's raining, I'm not going to go into the boat and show you what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm going to show you an animation uh, that I created. So the first step was to just whip up a rough CAD model in SolidWorks. This isn't completely to scale, it's to scale-ish. Basically, this was just to help me plan how I want to build this thing. Now technically the animation is still rendering right now, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to speak to it perfectly, but basically what I'm going to show you is my overall approach to this boat. Here's my crude CAD model. First I'm going to show you an exploded view of the floor. So you can see there's multiple layers to the floor. The top level is a finished layer of woven cloth. That's just for durability really. And then I have it tabbed on these sides down the sides of the tunnels and tabbed back up onto the transom. Underneath that, I'm going to have a layer of fiberglass tape. The fiberglass tape is going to be adhering those honeycomb panels to the tunnels of the boat. Um, below the floor, which again is that composite sandwich of biaxial cloth, honeycomb material, another layer of biaxial cloth, I'm then going to have some resin which glues it onto the tunnels. The stringer is a multi-piece stringer because you can't actually order 12 foot sections of kusa, so that's going to be a composite of composites, so to speak. The transom, again, is a multiple layer process. And then I'm also going to be installing knee braces to help further stiffen that transom to take the load of a high horsepower outboard on a jack plate. So let's go through that in more detail now. All right, so here's my bear hull. This is basically what I'm gonna be starting with. So the plan is to take some polyester resin, mix it with some cabosil until I get like a thicker consistency, smear it all over the back wall of that transom. And then I'm going to take a Kusa transom and smash it in there and probably use some sort of bolts and a two by four to help compress it against the back of the boat hull. Once that cures, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna take another layer of resin, smear it all over that transom and take the other transom board and sandwich that on there. Once that cures, I'm going to try to uh, coat the whole transom area with resin and then I'm going to be using a thin layer of fiberglass chopped mat I just want to use the chopped mat to help conform into all the little nooks and valleys there. And then this will be the base layer for the woven roving. So it could just be a heavier cloth, I'm not really sure yet. But if anyone has any uh, advice on what I should be doing for the transom there, that was my thought. So you got kusa, kusa, layer of chopped mat, then a layer of cloth. The other thing I want to do is I want to put on knee braces. Knee braces substantially stiffen the transom of this boat. And I'm going to be running those down both sides of the transom onto the inside of the tunnels. So I feel like that's a lot of surface area to get some stiffness. Once that is cured, then I'm going to move on to the stringer. Now the stringer is going to be made up of four pieces here. It's going to be a composite of two three quarter inch thick panels glued together. So it should be an inch and a half thick total. I'm going to be building that outside of the boat and then dropping it down where that factory stringer sat. Once that is uh, glued in there pretty well, I'll, I'll of course fill it the lower edges to help 
make that curved to avoid voids in the fiberglass cloth. And then I'm going to be encapsulating that entire stringer and tabbing it onto the bottom of the hull with fiberglass cloth. So that's the overall approach to the structure of the boat. So for the floor, what I want to do first is take that honeycomb panel and bond a layer of that biaxial cloth to the bottom of it. Once that is cured, I'm then going to take resin, dump it all over the tunnels, throw those panels in there, weight them down really well, and then let that cure. Now at that point, the top of those panels is still gonna be bare. So then what I wanna do is I wanna take another layer of biaxial cloth and do the top layer of those panels while it's in the boat. That way, if it overhangs a little bit, I can help start gluing it and conforming it down to the tunnels and really getting it secured on there. After that cures, I wanna do a layer of fiberglass tape around the perimeter. So tabbing it to the transom and bringing that tape down the sides of the tunnels to help glue it on there. Lastly, I wanna do a top coat of this fiberglass cloth. This is just going to be a wear surface because I'm not sure I'm gonna run carpet in this boat. And yeah, th this is my overall plan. This is definitely the most advanced build that I've done, but all right, so if anyone has any feedback on this build, please leave it in the comments below. I really want to do a good job on this thing, and I'm definitely learning a lot of new things, so <clears throat> I could be mistaken on some of this stuff. The other cool thing that's happened in the past week is one of the previous owners of my boat, I believe, reached out to me, and I did a FaceTime with him, so we're going to jump over to that now just to learn a little bit more about this boat's history. So let's check that out. And because Apple updated their OS that you can't record the screen and the audio, I have done that. So old iPhone for audio, new iPhone for FaceTime. Yeah, bit hood, but whatever. Hey, Mark. Hey, hi. How's it going? Good, how are you tonight? Ah. Good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for reaching out. Basically, you think this is your boat. We're just going to, I don't know, I have some questions and we'll, we'll see okay. if it is or not. So wh where are you from right now? Where are you located? I live in, I've always lived in Southeast Michigan. Okay. And you were saying that the marina, that cruise out thing that was uh, yes. CNC, that's a marina over there, or was? Is it still around? It was, it was a family owned. They were pretty big. They sold a lot of glass trons. They sold some of the uh, sleep crafts. They were rigged there. The dealer, its original location is gone. They moved down the street a couple of miles. And then when the owners retired, Colony Marine bought it. Uh, they sell Sea Rays now. The Sleek Craft is probably one of the best looking performance boats. I love the long nose. They got really nice lines. Yeah, and, I mean. But there are very few of them around. The boat that you bought, I don't know if this is it or not. Um, when when did you get it? I believe the boat is a 1986. Is yep. that what your paperwork says? Okay. I acquired it in 1989. It was three years old when I bought it. Okay. So it was like a new boat. And then I had it till 96 when I traded it in for a uh, crown line boat, bow rider. <laughs> okay. So those are the years that I did have it. So it was a, a new boat, basically. So I actually did find this thing on the internet. I found a listing and it's definitely this boat. And it was from 2009 and it was some guy named Chad up in La Crosse, Wisconsin. So some okay. at some point it moved from Michigan to Wisconsin, yeah, that's and I don't I know. Think you're the, I think you're the seventh owner. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I, when I traded it in, uh, the Roberts family bought it, so it stayed on Lake Orion in Michigan till at least 2000. After that, I lost track of it. So I don't know who he sold it to or where it went after that. But you mentioned you're the owner, and two people before you is where it got caught in the hoist. So if you add that up, that's seven people. There may yeah. be more. I don't know. It's <laughs> so been, to put it's it been passed around a bit. Okay. <laughs> and I, if you've seen the videos, the amount of silicone I pulled out of the transom was just obscene. Yes. It was I have, it was so bad. <laughs> well, the transoms were weak, even new. Because I can show you pictures when I had it with three years old, how the dealer rigged up some cables. It was nice and neat. But by the time you got it, it was 10 times what originally it was. But being rotten for one thing, but they were weak transoms to start with. They did not have the knees from the transoms down to the floor. Right. Those are missing in that boat. And that's a big factor with an outboard. Let's let's check out this boat. I guess um, I'm going to start. I'll, I won't go to the, 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 the numbers. The numbers. But <laughs> one thing that I was confused about was next to this splash plate, 
there was a little circular hole here that almost looked like a fuel filler. And I don't understand what that I, was for. Yeah. Nope, that one's not there in my boat. So that's, that was after. Okay. Right next to that where the holes are, there was a, like an L-shaped aluminum plate. Okay, that was from the dealer. They put those in and then a cable back to the bolts to the motor. Like I said, I can send you some pictures. That was set up from the dealer to help keep the transom from flexing. Even when it was new, if you go to the back corner behind you there where your elbow is, it, it was always cracking right there. We were always fixing them because they were just flexing, even new. And a weak transom, and when you put a four inch jack plate on there for an outboard, you're moving the weight back even farther. So, so did, you did you have this jack plate on here? Is that a CNC, the roller? Um, I think it's a CNC machine. It says uh, power lift. Does that look familiar? Yeah, that looks like it. Okay. Yeah, it had the rollers, which I don't like because you're pinpointing your stress. If you think about it, when the motor's all the way up, you're only touching on four points. Right, and since it's a since it's a circle, it's like very tiny points. Yeah. Yeah. And it was always mushrooming and, and flaring out. I was always grinding it down, trying to make it smooth. No, oh, great. So I don't like that design, but that's what they put on it. So what did you have it rigged with? That was an OMC. Oh. It originally came with a 220 Yamaha. What? That's crazy. Okay. Huh. It was a nice motor, nice running. It was totally stock. It had the well, um, lower unit, the, the nose cone. Right. The water pickup, and I ran a 26 chopper on it. Okay. So I got about 82 miles an hour on radar. That's that's my goal for this boat. I, I, if I can hit 80 with it, I'll be happy. Yeah. The interior was quite heavy in that. Weight is everything in a tunnel boat. So I measured the seats and everything was 175 pounds. It was like an extra person riding with you. Right. So weight is I, one of the things that I'm going to try to uh, fix okay. when I'm rebuilding this. I, I have some plans. Wow. So we'll see okay. what we can do. But yep. What about, uh, you, were, you were mentioning the stickers near switches. No, I haven't yeah, cleaned. Yeah, the black label maker. Remember the squeeze and click type? Thing? Yep. That's what those are, right? Yep. So let's look yeah. at them. Does that look I like? I put those here. <laughs> That's so... another thing. It's, I mean, who else would do that exactly like I did? It's, and they're still there, which is amazing. All right. So I don't have stickers over the numbers here. So let's just see what we see. If this, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's your boat. It sure looks like it's, it. Yeah, the white is a white vinyl block, right? Oh, it is. Yeah, and underneath is going to be my numbers. Okay. Don't tell me. <laughs> All right. Well, I will. I will. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's your boat, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... I'll send you more pictures for more proof and uh, more information and stuff. So. Yeah, if you could send me some uh, higher quality photos, that would be awesome. And one of the things that I think was funny was one of the photos you sent me. You're towing yeah. it with an Astro van, and. Yeah. There's, there's my Astro, so I just... That's what I'm telling you, we got all the same things. I, <laughs> you're working on a Porsche, I got a poor man's Porsche. I'm doing a Volkswagen Doom Buggy. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, well, good luck, and I'll be watching, and uh, keep in touch. All right, take care. Thanks, right. Mark. Yeah, have a good night. Cheers. Bye. All right, that's about it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Here's a sneak peek at next episode, so pretty excited about this.